Who, and despite men accounting for nearly half of all fertility problems, infertility is still commonly regarded as a woman's issue. Uh, Ayla Barmer, who is a registered dietitian, nutritionist, and founder of Full Well, is joining us to talk about the pivotal role that men play in everything from conception and pregnancy health to a baby's long term health. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, thanks so much for being here with us. So many people are uh, going through some bouts of infertility. And for those of us who are older in terms of our reproductive years but still want families, this can be such a draining journey. So when it comes to women, we look at the biological time clock. Does age matter for men like it does for us? Yes. So men do become more at risk for fertility issues as they age, and there can be consequences for both the health of the pregnancy and baby. However, the, the positive thing is that it's less about age and more about the cumulative effect of stressors on the body that happen as we age. So if we think about it in this way, the strategy becomes minimize and compensate for the stressors. And I don't just mean stress in the classical sense of it, but also things like nutrient deficiencies, lifestyle choices, environmental exposures, like pollution, for example. So absolutely, there are things that are out of our control, but what we put into our body and many of our lifestyle choices largely are in our control and can, in a sense, reverse the clock. Okay, so let's talk about the nutrition and lifestyle choices here. Uh, you're saying this is a clear connection to improvement in male fertility, resulting in healthier babies. What should our partners be doing and what should they avoid? Let's go with some do's first. Yes, I always like focusing on the positive first. So I have four things that I encourage men to focus on, which is based on my 15 years of working with couples in practice. So first and foremost, and put very simply, we want to flood the body with the right stuff to help combat the things that we can't control, as I mentioned before, such as our age or certain environmental exposures. So top of that list is eating a diet high in antioxidants and omega-3 fatty acids. So think fruits, vegetables, seafood, including shellfish, which are uniquely high in sperm supporting nutrients like zinc and selenium, uh, exercising routinely to pump fresh oxygenated and nutrient rich blood throughout the body, particularly between the brain and the reproductive organs that helps with good hormone balance. Number three, get seven, eight hours of sleep a night, ideally as closely in sync as possible with the light and dark cycles, because our circadian rhythms are actually very much tied to our reproductive health. And it's one of the reasons why we see more fertility issues in shift workers. And then lastly, daily supplementation, because we aren't going to get it perfect all of the time consistently. So high quality supplements like Full Wells Vitality and Virility, for example, can really help just fill those gaps and ensure that you are getting what you need to support overall men's reproductive health and sperm quality. Okay, and you just have three don'ts here, so let's go over those. Yes, yeah, so there are three big bang for your buck, so to speak, don'ts that I, I encourage men to focus on. Number one would be chemical and heavy metal exposure. The reality is that we are exposed to more environmental chemicals and pollutants today than any other time in history. And some big bang for your buck, again, type things to, to focus on would be to reduce your toxin exposure is to swap out fragrance products, which have known hormone disrupting chemicals in them mm. with more natural options. So think your air fresheners, those wall plugins, the uh, car air fresheners, ditching those all together. Or if you have something like that are made with essential oils, you can try that. That's usually a safer option. Number two is alcohol. And I know this one isn't popular and I'm not saying it has to go entirely, but you, you know, if you think about your partner who won't be drinking throughout a pregnancy, um, I'd like, I usually ask men to avoid or greatly reduce their alcohol intake for at least that three month window before conceiving, because it's going to mean healthier sperm, healthier pregnancies and healthier babies. And then lastly, smoking. And we know this, right? Particularly cigarettes. The thing about sperm is that they are very, sensitive to what's called oxidative stress and cigarette smoking generates a lot of that. So quitting smoking will have a hugely positive impact. Okay. And you know, when we think about this journey, the average couple experiencing infertility goes through two in vitro fertilization cycles costing between 40 and $60,000 if they don't have success conceiving in that first three to six month window that you were talking about trying to have a baby. So uh, the lines of communication are open. We appreciate you helping us out and giving us some information that can uh, maybe reduce some of the stress for all of us before we put in that uh, financial strain as well. Thank you for having me.